G'day fellas and welcome to the public update preview release note patch review. That's a lot of letters, a lot of words. Apologies. We're getting into it, into the thick of it. In this video, we're going to be going through all the new changes. If there's a specific sieve or a specific feature you want to see, make sure you check down in the chapters. Uh, we'll be covering everything. So new game mode, Empire Wars. We already talked about it. We're not going to go into it too much in this video, but we are going to be diving through a lot of these balance changes. So we're going to try and get on down to them. Three new maps, Golden Knights, Migration, Volcanic Islands, Ranked Map Pool Refresh. I love this. Dry Arabia, Prairie, Lipany, The Pit. Now, I will say Highview is kind of missing here, and I do like Highview because it's basically just Dry Arabia with, with a couple more outposts, so I don't mind that. Um, Marshland, which is the map where you've got that big pool in the middle, but it's kind of like restricted based on... Uh, like your fishing boats can't always get through. So I, I guess that's something to watch out for. Uh, Danube River, we played that one before. Mongolian Heights, you will be familiar with that. Now, remember, these are the change maps. So Danube River, uh, it's got the bridges on it. M Mongolian Heights has got five uh, land crossings on it and they're quite big. So it's, it's very, very cumbersome to wall. Forest Ponds and Continental. Now, if I remember correctly, Forest Ponds uh, is just going to be the Kawasan. Um, let me double check and see. What's it called? Forest Ponds, Forest Ponds. Where are you? Forest Ponds. Oh, it's not. It's the one in the corner. Well, I'm glad that I checked because the, the Kawasan one is not Forest Ponds. Uh, so it's the Four Waters. I think we've actually got that in the in the map pool at the moment. And Continental, which is the island uh, with water around the edges. For the team ranked map pool, Dry Arabia, Liberty, Hideout, Marshland, Wetlands. Uh, hold on, Wetlands? Oh no, Wetlands is the Kawasan one. There, there you go. French Pass. Oh yeah, when we see French Pass from this map, that, that's, uh, that's okay. I don't mind it. Uh, Danube River, Boulder Bay, and Forest Ponds. Honestly, good map pools. I'm going to be... I'm, I'm I'm happy with these. I, I, I like these map pools. I think this is good. Now, you guys can probably hear my voice. Uh, it's 4.28 in the morning at the moment. So, please be kind to me. Please be kind to my voice. This is morning, Drongo. This is what you wake up uh, after the, the, the night of partying right now. So, you're going to have to... Uh, you're going to have to be patient with me, all right? Voice chat. We've already talked about that. No slurs in the voice chat. No telling your teammates uh, where to go. You just be kind to everybody, okay? And if, look, at the end of the day, you got to remember, you may play, or you, next game, you're going to be in that game, but the enemy, or sorry, the ally, because it's hard to, hard to uh, get those two correct sometimes, the ally won't be in your game next game, or at least they won't be on your team next game, or at least, at least we can hope. Anyway, so th the point I'm trying to make is, don't, don't get too invested, right? It's okay. Focus on your game. Don't focus on their game. All right. Crashes and stability. AI has not adapted to the new trade system and may... Oh, God. <laughs> not like this. Crash. Immediate crashes on the post-match screen. Okay. Th this is a big thing, all right? Because I know a lot of you guys, myself included, play against the AI. I'm practicing against the AI. Uh, that's not good. May result in application hangs, crashes, and the AI's trade traders idling. Oof. We suggest that you do not play against AI opponents during this pop. Excuse me. <laughs> Yikes. All right. Okay. Um, let's just move on, shall we? Uh, okay. That, 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 that's pretty big. Hopefully this gets fixed up before going to live. Because if it doesn't, we're going to have trouble. We're going to have big trouble. I, I, hopefully this gets fixed up fixed up in the, pat, uh, in the pop. Pop is running for... I think they've got it up here. Does it say... I'm pretty sure the pup is running for like a, quite a while, like maybe a week or two. Uh, so let's hope that there is a... Let's hope that there, there's a, a an update that comes out and fixes this. Okay, so gameplay. Placeholder cubes appear. Wait, is this just like the known issues? Oh, if this is just known issues, I'm not, I'm not reading it. Actually, UI, UX. Golden Heights is using the French pass map icon. Okay, cool. Performance upgrades. The build contains a number of visual upgrades and performance related improvements. The kind of... These kinds of system-based changes. Okay, Significantly improved terrain rendering, new ambient occlusion, improved directional light shadows, improved material spec specular response. Wonderful. I've been looking forward to material specular response for a while now. Great. That, that, that's a joke. I have got no idea. All right. So general changes and bug fixes. This is the meat. This is the potatoes. Let's get into it. Fixed being able to build stone walls through stone wall towers when connecting to an existing stone wall. Love it. Fix a rare case. Actually, the, these are all just like really, this is bugs, isn't it? A rare case where defensive structures would stop firing at visible targets within range. Improved visibility around sacred sites by updating the UI to prevent units being blocked from the player's view. Clap, 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 clap. It only took 18 months, but we got there in the end, and that's what's important. Oh, man. The, you know, I tell you what, I'm so glad. I am so, so glad that is gone. 
All right, trees no longer block the cursor when garrisoning into buildings behind them. Fixed by where straggler trees would sometimes not be removed when buildings were placed on top of them. Interesting. Villagers can probably switch weapons to a knife from a crook. So a knife is killing a player and crook is killing a sheep. And a crook does 12 damage, if I remember correctly, whereas a knife does six. And so if, if you have a knife out and then you try and kill the sheep, it will take two shots. I'm pretty sure. As a follow-up fix to the previous health bar setting optimization work, wild animal health bars are improved to better reflect players' expectations uh, and fix an issue where portions of the minimap were not clickable after it is rotated. Production sounds are functioning now in all landmarks and rank season name is now localized. Fix an issue where long wind condition descriptions on mods would block players from changing wind condition options. AI updates. Well, that is a lot of AI updates. I'm not going to go through all the AI updates, but if you would like to go through, I will leave a link in the description to where you can actually come uh, and, and check out these changes. Now, you will have to sign into Steam. You can see I am signed in and I, I am cashed up as well. Watch out. That's from my... Um, I, I bought the, the new Star Wars game and then I couldn't play this new Star Wars game, so I had to get a refund. But fortunately, Steam gave me the refund. I, I just knew I couldn't take it to two hours. Uh, for anybody who was, who was playing along, I had an issue or an, an error where um, I had like an error message on my screen where the game would not save and I couldn't get rid of the message. And I had, like, had to play the game with that message. I'm like, well, this isn't going to work. Can't make content out of this, can I? So I just, I was just refunded it. Anyway, maps. Variation of different trees has increased in some biomes. Added missing straggler trees for hideout, wetlands, waterholes, mountain clearing, and forest ponds. This is good. This is good. Oh, we're actually missing mountain clearing from the new uh, map pool. I kind of like mountain clearing. That was fun. The Thunderdome. The map, maps, matches were a little bit wild on that map, though. It was like Fast Imperial for the French. That was kind of wild. Archipelago changes. Black Forest changes. Prairie changes. Adjusted the Sacred Site and Prairie in an attempt to have them generate more evenly between teams of players. Good. Warring holes. Water holes. Updated water holes to have a minimum number of forest spawns in close proximity to all players. Wetlands. Uh, and masteries. Okay, so just a whole bunch of localization fixes by the looks of it. Um, and changes just for preparation for this patch. UI and UX. So for anybody who doesn't know, I'm passionate about UX and UI. That is one of my most favorite things in the world. Uh, I feel like a, a lot of UIs could be done better. Let's take a look and see what they've got. Instead of displaying no result for matches, going through an arbit arbitration process, we now display the final result in the match history screen when established. Okay. Fix an issue where starting units are counted as double in the post-game timeline. Okay. Units defeated count in the post-match screen will exclude player deleted units. Good. We've updated the frequency at which the UI will calculate resources gained per minute, leading to more accurate values. Wonderful. Really good. Standardized language of many technologies to use attack speed instead of reduced reload duration. So it's easier to compare their efforts, or effects and understand the bonuses provided. Okay. To be honest, I don't like attack speed. I would much prefer uh, reload reduced duration. But that's okay. The UI command card tooltip will now probably update the names and stats of new upgrades. For example, lancers and men at arm units will now correctly or will now display the correct weapon being used after researching the Kalij weapon upgrade owned blades. What's interesting is that they it will always does it. I'm pretty sure it all, in the past it used to just show the previous upgrade or the, the previous weapon. So that, that that's good. Uh, an improvement has been made to the observable games browser to make it easier to find the games you want. Hopefully they've fixed it. So for anybody who doesn't know the way that this, the, the way that the observe function used to work is, and it's the silliest thing, okay? But let me just explain it. You, you would go into multiplayer and you'd hit observe. And what it would do is it would load a hundred games. And from that 100 games, that was it. You could be like, okay, well, I've loaded a hundred games. Now I would like to see uh, all the two player games. And it would just give you literally like three two player games. And you'd be like, um, could, could you show me other two-player games? And it's like, sorry, these are the only games I've got. Because it only would, would, would load that 100 games and then just give you the, the two-player games from that. So I think they might have fixed it. I'm hoping that they've fixed it. Uh, I did read a, a, a comment from a, a friend and they said that now um, the observe function will automatically update. So I don't know what that means. You can see that there's not a whole lot of games going on just yet on the pop. So come on over. Come on. Join it. Join up. Join in. Anyway, um, so 
Uh, coat of arm patterns will now fill the entire space of their associated banner. Coat of arm patterns now extend the length of the banner. Players can now easily view other players' profiles directly via the match history tab of the player profile. This is great. Uh, so ba basically, if, if we go and take a look, so Mr. Merlin and Crackity are in a game. And hypothetically, if I wanted to go to Mr. Merlin's page from Crackity's recent match history here, I couldn't do that in the past. What I had to do in the past, I had to block Mr. Merlin, okay? And then from there, uh, now I hope that doesn't uh, remove him from my friends list. From, from there, I would have to go to my blocked list, find Mr. Merlin, and then I could go up here and go unblock. And then that would allow me uh, to then come to his profile page. That, that's the way that I used to do it in the past. So apparently there is a way to do that now where you can just... Oh, look, now I can just click on their names. <laughs> wow. Oh, geez, that's so good. <laughs> oh, triple A game. Uh, sorry, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have. Okay. Um, what do we got here? So uh, players can no longer leave a party while in a match lobby or while searching for a match. Players can no longer leave a party while in a match. Okay. So you can still alt F4. Notifications are now displayed in front of modal menus. Added a new option to control the overall shadow quality of units and buildings. Fix an issue where enemy AI's age up notification was will not always display properly. Converted the text or in the age up model modal uh, to an image to address translation issues. Uh, and fixed a bug that prevented movie titles. Okay, increase the font size of campaign. Fixed an issue where background music sometimes is not playing after watching a full campaign video. And you can now exit villages sub menus by hitting the escape key, hitting right click, or hitting a dedicated custom hotkey. Wonderful. Major design and balance changes. Trade has okay. We we got we got to get into a custom lobby right now. We got we got to test out trade. Hopefully the AI doesn't bug out on us. So let's just go. We'll play a standard Dry Arabia game. Uh, do we want Dry Arabia? We, let's go with something with trade carts in the corner. Trade carts in the corner. Trade carts in the corner. Drongo. Let's do that. Actually, we don't want to go like that. Yeah, let's allow cheats. Cool. All right, we'll keep that in the background. Trade has always been a great source of gold in the late game. However, there are a number of civilization bonuses that make trade more effective earlier on. We've updated the formula to streamline the experience and improve overall balance. Gold is now given every time the trader touches a market instead of at the end of a trip. So you'll effectively be getting more gold, getting gold more often, but less gold each time the trader arrives. This also means there's less need for micromanagement when, you, when your trade line is attacked. Simply right click on a market and they'll go back to trading without, are they saying trade post instead of market or do they mean market? And they'll go back to trading without having to worry about losing the gold being carried. I'm pretty sure they're saying market, but they actually mean trade post. So trade post is the neutral thing, right? Like trade thing is, the trade post is this thing in the corner, trade post. And I always get this confused. So I, I don't expect the devs to, to, to get it right either. Um, because it, it can be a little bit confusing. Because at the end of the day, I mean, the patch notes are being written by a person. Um, and and they're, they're not perfect. So what, I just want to check, like, if... So I, I'm assuming what they're saying here is that every time the trader touches a trade post, instead of at the end of the trip, you'll be given your gold. Um, so... Set a home market button has been removed and replaced with restart trading button. Traders will now remember the last trade market they were at. So basically, from my understanding, this kills the trade trick. You're not let, you're not going to be able to do the trade trick anymore. Um, so let's use our cheats. So if we put a market here and a market here, just to start us off, and a market here, and a market here. All right, trader. Zero. It got zero, right? Oh, okay. So it, it's a trade post and... Oh, so it delivers gold and... Ah, okay, 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 okay. So they're, basically they're considering a market as a, a trade post. So, I mean, realistically, this should be reworded to say every time the trader touches a market or a trading post, it will give the gold. So if I was to do this one... It, it should give me like, let's say like two, three gold or something like that. Six gold. Three, three. Two, two. Come on, bro. Two gold. All right. So one over here and then one over here. And so my, I can't do the trade trick here and I can't see how much gold it's carrying. So let's determine now what the income. So for anybody who doesn't know, I, I, I am absolute, I, I'm genuinely autistic. So it's like, I need to know how to do this thing. Uh, I have open notepad, but obviously Windows 11, not the quickest out of the gates. 
So uh, in, in the past, it used to be... Um, actually, we, we, we can time it here. So we're just going to call it a 210 open. So ready? Boom. 210. Uh, from the from here. So starting at 210. Uh, so that, that's pretty much corner to corner. I mean, it's actually, is that corner to corner? I think there might be one tile. Yeah, there's one tile between it. That one's technically corner to corner. We could go and... I mean, I'm not I'm not going to go and, and time it, but I will... Uh, I will double check. I didn't actually see how much the, the central gold... Wait. Okay. So we, we got to double check this. So th this guy's coming full length here, and then this guy here is, is coming through. Don't tell me they're going to hit at the same time. Um, so we're basically just calculating how strong these are now compared to a villager. That's what I want to know. Um, because are, are they pop efficient? Obviously, they're a source of in, in, infinite gold. Oh my god, they're actually going to hit at the same time, aren't they? Come on. Come on, bro. Go, go, go. Central one is going to get... Come on. 19 and 71. 71 and 19. That is a massive difference. So halfway across the map is only 19. But it's obviously going to be doing like double the trade. So it, it's technically not like 19 versus 71. It's more like 38 versus 71. But you can see the difference, right? And so th this guy coming in, he's also going to be 71. We started him at 2 minutes and 10. Uh, and now he's going to arrive. And it's at... Three minutes and 43 seconds. So finished at 3.43. So this is actually really good. This means trade gets started a lot sooner. Um, and it makes it trade uh, a lot less susceptible to raiding, as as they did say. This is actually a really good change. The new trade is is, is massive. So let's calculate this now. So um, we're 93 seconds. Uh, and it was 71 gold. Now, 71 gold is... Uh, am I going to need to send some archers down here just to deal with you, mate? Wait, you're like... You you started off with max resources and you're just chilling right now. You're like, John Cena, look at you go. Fair enough. I, d I don't think I need to worry about you then. Um, So... That was 71 gold over 93 seconds. So very simply, we just take the calculator and divide 71 gold over 93. And we get our gold per minute, uh, which is 76.3 76 76 gold per minute. Uh, So GPM. Which is very, very good. That That is... Uh, is that right? That, that, that can't be right. That's not right. It, it's got to be the other way. Drongo math. Uh, 93 divided by 71. That, well, that's not right. Hold on. Am I like... Am I, am I missing something right now? There's no way that this is 76 gold per minute if that's 71 gold coming through here. It's got to be... I, sh I, I know I shouldn't be doing maths on stream. 1.3? Yeah. Hold on. 71 divided by 93 is 0.76. Because to me, that makes sense. But it's 93 seconds. Oh, God, this is so awkward. Because now I'm going to now I'm gonna claim a number and it's not going to be right at all. So what were we at? We were at 71 on the other side. 73. So 73 gold per minute. Or 73 gold per trip. And it's 90 seconds. Is it because I... Hold on. Okay, so if... Alright. Carry the one. This is, this is like literally... like I, I feel like that meme with the broken brain where it's got like... The, there's There's nothing in between it. So 0.78. Oh, oh, you know what I'm calculating? I'm cal calculating gold per second. Okay, that makes more sense. 0.78 gold per second. <laughs> oh gosh, I finally real worked it out. Gosh, 0.78 gold per second. You know what? I'm I'm trolling, guys. I shouldn't be trolling. I'm, I'm, I actually just did all of that to increase engagement on the video. So now you guys are all going to be commenting about how terrible I am at maths. Uh, so that's gold per second. 0.78 gold per second. So if we were to take 0.78 gold per second and then times it by 60, we have 46.8 gold. Uh, 46.8 gold uh, per minute. Now, for anybody wondering how much gold per minute is a villager on a, on a gold mine, it works out to be about 36. Uh, so 36 
gold per minute. Uh, now, obviously, this is the most basic form of trade. Uh, there are a lot of civilizations that get really good bonuses on this. As an example, the Abbasid get cheaper traders. Uh, they also get some more interesting things. Uh, but that's a, a good baseline measurement, 46.8 gold per minute. So it's roughly about the same as a villager, but I think the key to remember here is that it is infinite. Um, that, that, that's the big difference. It's a, it's a large thing to invest in those individual traders, but it's not such a big deal um, when it's... Uh, because you're only putting down the market. The market's very cheap. All right, let's keep moving forward. Mod download update for custom lobbies. We made it easier to see the status of modded matches in the lobby by adding indicators to the left side of the player's name. This shows the status in the lobby for the mods required, whether they have blocked user-generated content. Bro, can you imagine you get into a lobby and someone's blocked user-generated content and they're just like, I don't know what's happening, guys. It's not working. It's like, wow. Okay. Uh, unique options for every sieve. Here we go. Unique units and technologies are major factors that make civilizations feel different from each other, adding excitement and variety. We reviewed the overall enjoyment and effectiveness of every civilization specific unit and technology for this update, which resulted in a variety of changes from minor tweaks to full redesigns. You'll be, you'll f below you'll find improvements to balance general gameplay enhancements, as well as some exciting new tools. Now I will say this, because I think this is important for anybody who doesn't know as a content creator, um, I, I do sometimes get access to things early. Um, but in the past that's happened where I've, I've kind of, I've gotten access to notes early and I've read through them. And then when they've gone live, they've changed. And so when they went live, I, I was really confused. So now what I've done here is I, I, I have not read a single thing in these changes. So this is all brand new to me. Everything you're going to be hearing right now is just a hundred percent crisp, authentic, raw Drongo. All right. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go into it. Balance and gameplay changes. New spyglass. Oh God, Age of Empires three Portuguese. Uh, new spyglasses technology available from the stables in the Imperial Age. Incre increases the line so line of sight of scouts. Scouts no longer gain extra line of sight as the player ages up. Interesting. So that's that's a buff to China because they have Tang Dynasty. Uh, spyglasses has unique remappable hotkeys for the Abbasid. Okay. Why, why for those sieves? Oh, as they have unique stables. Okay, of course. Wait. Why do they have unique stables? What? Why do they have unique stable? <laughs> what? Or does it mean like unique stable units, maybe? Uh, Palisade gate, health decrease from 1500 to, to 1250. Okay. Units standing on walls that idle aggro will no longer leave the safe walls to chase enemy units. Good change. All defensive buildings attack radiuses are now made visible to any player when selected. So you're telling me if I come into this lobby right now and it's on Altai and I go up against my AI friend who's going to cause my game to finish. If I click on his town center, I'm going to be able to see the range of the town center. Are we AOE 2 now? There's my range of, of the town center. Okay. 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 All right. The one thing to note is that you can't always uh, rely on this range. <laughs> can't always rely on that range though. Um, okay, interesting. I, I, I kind of like it, right? Uh, definitely gives advantage to attackers now. Monks can now heal. I wonder, if, if you can't see the building, can you see the attack radius? If I put a Barbican on somebody, do, do you guys get what I mean, right? Like, okay, say I'm playing the Chinese. Hypothetically. No, 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 because they have to click it. They have to click it. Okay, never mind. It, wait, is there an option for persistent radiuses? It doesn't look like it yet. Age of Empires 2 has got a mod where it's got a persistent attack radius around it. Uh, monks can now heal any injured friendly units nearby while patrolling. Uh, heal and inspire abilities can now be queued from the command card. I think I think with this one here though, even in Age of Empires 2, it doesn't show you unless you can see the building. Okay, naval updates. Naval, I mean, do we really? Yeah, let, let's do it. Just just for the guys who are like, oh, Drongo, do the naval updates. All right, all right, we got you guys. Cost reduced for Armored Hull. Pretty big, pretty, pretty big reduction. Research time also reduced. So it's now like a, a big veterancy update for all your ships. Delhi Sultanate have their... Time reduced on it. Naval ships under attack. Move orders will now continue along the shortest path to their destination after destroying a target. 
Uh, arrow ships now target the center of enemy ships correctly. This improves the arrow visuals and communicates when they hit or miss better. Sprinkled ships now properly target and shoot enemy units that are close by and increase the sprinkled ships bonus damage versus buildings from 45 to 55. Good changes. All right, let's get into the Civ specific stuff. This is the fun stuff. Here we go. Abbasid Dynasty. Men at Arms unit renamed to Ghulam. This fearsome warrior boasts a powerful double strike that will chew through unarmored units but is less effective versus enemy knights and men at arms. It deals two attacks in quick succession. Attack is decreased from 12 slash 14, I'm assuming that's Imperial, to 10 slash 12. Attack speed changed from 1.38 to 1.13, that's very quick attack speed. And 1.63 for the full double strike. So it comes in, does the double strike at 1.63, and then the attack speed goes down to 1.13. So it's attacking like a madman. Cost increased. Yo. So that means that it becomes a more... Th th that's a good thing, right? It becomes a more effective unit um, in, in the late game. Cost increased from 100 to... 100 slash 20 to 120 slash 30. Phew. Movement speed increased from 1.12 to 1.19. So not quite 1.25, but still pretty fast. Health increased. Bro, look at the size of that thing. These are pretty big numbers. Okay, did did they change the look of the unit as well? I'm curious. Let's I mean, I I don't want to do this for every single civilization, but now you got me a little bit a little bit interested. House of Wisdom, corrected health, help text reference to prototization instead of faith. Uh, preservation of knowledge. Oh yeah, we, we already talked about that change. I think that's that's like a bug fix, isn't it? Oh, House of Wisdom now has a zero out of one on it. Uh, in a GIF here. Bro, I didn't enable cheats. Are you serious? Why didn't you guys tell me? Come on. I'm just kidding. I, I'm sorry if I triggered anybody. <laughs> if I triggered anybody there. I, I, that wasn't real. Like... Don't worry, don't worry. It wasn't real. Camel Rider cost change from 180 food, 60 gold to 160 food, 30 gold, 30 wood. So we're Chinese Song Dynasty Chukunun right now. Developer note, we wanted to increase the general cost effectiveness of this unit as well as bring down the cost, food cost, so it's easy to mix into production cycles. I do like that because if you do start making that unit, it's like, I need... I... Okay. <laughs> uh, you do have to start making a lot of farms. Um, so let's just quickly drop that down, drop that down in a jiffy. That's not what I wanted. I wanted in a jury. There we go. And one, two. And... Did I not hit castle? Okay, there we go. So it's it's got a new... Okay, so it's still just a men at arms. I don't know why, but it... it, it does it look... Di it looks different. I think it's got... Does it have the... um? It looks like a Rus men at arms. And these guys are beasts, so... H how much health do they have? If, if we get a university... I, I want to see, like, fully... Like, their final form. And you can get, like, camel support on these as well. Two seventy health. Dude, these things are broken. Look at those numbers, dude. Oh, my lord. Look at those numbers. Where's the sheep? Bring the sheep. Come here, baby. You're about to get sacrificed for the greater good. That, that didn't seem that effective. Anyway. <laughs> okay, so they basically still look like a men at arms. They're just called a ghoul arm. And they've got a new... Uh, they got new artwork, which is definitely very cool. Where is it? Over here. I do like the that. Uh, and they've still got mad armor as well. That's an, another thing to note. Just not... So they're, they're a real tanky unit, still just not as effective against enemy armored units. Um, but yeah, interesting to note. Okay, so... Uh, removed long firing delay on camel archers. Damage per second remains the same, but it's now easy to kite and micro the unit. Love it. Camel Rider Shields and Camel Rider Barding Techs are now tier upgrades and share the same UI slot at the stables. So, Camel Rider Shields. Let's just... I, I just want to double check this. So, Camel Rider Shields comes first. I think it's the two. No, it's three. Oh, look, and you can see it there. Plus three, and then increases the armor by... It. Okay. Cool. Uh, and then, so, if I was to make a Camel Rider... And delete a villager here. I think that's got... What is it? Just a casual 8 armor. Okay. 
I wasn't, I didn't need any more than that. That, that was perfect. Uh, okay, so Teak Masks, which is the uh, water technology. Cost reduced from 100, 150 to 75, 125. Move to Castle Age from Feudal Age or move from Castle, Castle Age to Feudal Age. Research time reduced from 30 seconds to 20 seconds. And instead of 10% movement speed, now adds 10% HP to military ships. Wow, that's a, that's a lot of health. Uh, and Imams, create a more subtle scaled down version of the conversion sound for single target conversions. Let's have, let's have a look. I mean, I, I should probably just be building houses at this point. Come here, buddy. Where are we? No. Is it? It's so cute, dude. <laughs> it's a cute little wallalol. There's a new wallalol in town. Wallalol. Wallalo. Sounds like my son is saying wallalo. Yeah, get him, boy. <laughs> Dude, this... Oh, my God. How cool does that sound sound? Dude, did I get the sheep? Excuse me. I didn't... <laughs> did I convert the sheep? And now I'm on cooldown? I convert... <laughs> I converted a sheep and it's like, here, so have you... <laughs> what? <laughs> and now I'm on cooldown? For 60 seconds for a sheep? I mean, don't get me wrong. I love you, mate, but... All right, we got the sheep. Let's at least check out the camel kiting ability. Oh, that's so good. Oh, my lord, dude. Yeah, hut is going to come back just for that one change. Okay, all right. Overall, Abbasid changes. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed, right? Like, they basically have a new uni unique unit. I Personally, I would love to see a little bit of differentiation on the ghoul arm to really bring it out from that men at arms. Just like, you know, to me, it feels like it's a men at arms. They just changed the name. Right, like I, I would love to see that. So hopefully that's in the pipeline. If it's not, make sure we make sure we chuck it on the whiteboard, guys. Uh, let's keep moving on. All right, because we've got the Chinese, obviously a civilization very close to my heart. Uh, reusable barrels. So that was the technology that reduced the cost of nest bees in Imperial Age. So it has been re reworked into additional barrels, which gives the nest bees an additional two rockets per volley. This is very big because it's obviously it's an effective increase in damage. So in, in the past, I think they did eight rolly of eight rolly rockets, eight volley of rockets. Um, isn't it funny how the brain does that? How it replaces the first letter of each word. Um, so now it, it's it's a twenty five percent increase in damage, which makes the nest of bees in the imperial age a much more cost effective unit. This is also a really scary thing because one of the things that people might not realize is once the nest of bees get to critical mass they destroy even like they, they destroy culverin they destroy um they destroy roller shutter trigger uh springholds so if you can maybe like maybe there's a strategy where you literally just get to like 27 nest of bees and win the game how, how do you deal with that imperial palace and spirit way landmarks are now tax drop-off locations okay so imperial palace is the age three landmark that gives you the line of sight uh, and you can see enemy villages and spirit way landmarks are now tax drop-off locations. This is good, right? Because if, if you were to watch a, a game where the Chinese play, um, you would see that there becomes a lot of locations on the map in particular that are quite far away from any tax drop-off points. So forward bases um, in particular are, are not exposed to any kind of tax drop-off locations. So this is a good way to, to kind of fix that up a little bit. Shukunu cost... Oh, no. Zhukunu cost adjusted from 20-30-30 to 30-20-30. So, hold on. Oh, so... They, they've just increased the food cost. Oh, that does actually hurt quite a lot. Mmm. We want to we wanna have a higher food tax on players making Zhukunu so they either have to risk going... Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That, that was my thought. I was like, oh, man, now I have to go out onto the map or make farms. And it's like... And the dev note. It's like, yeah, exactly. You have to make farms or you have to go onto the map. It's like... Oh, damn. Come on, man. All right, granite. Oh, grenadier. Oh, grenadier. Damage decreased from 13 to 10, okay? Damage type changed from rain da range damage to siege, in brackets. Ignores armor. Bonus damage versus buildings reduced from 65 to 20. So that's it. Our boy, the grenadier, is getting some love. And this is big. I'm, I'm pretty sure this takes the grenadier back to where it used to be, like... 12 months ago. So we're back. Grenadiers are on the menu. 
obviously they don't have the range that they used to. For anybody who forgot, Grenadiers used to have like 4.5 range or, or 4 range and then they'd go up to 4.8 with um, Pyrotechnics. Obviously not the case anymore. Fire Lancers. Torch damage reduced from 3640 to 3034. Okay, good change. In Castle Age, melee damage increased from 11 to 13 and Imperial Age, melee damage increased from 13 to 15. We want to reduce Fire Lancer ability to focus fire and defeat landmarks while increasing their ability to fight in direct engagements. This is a good change. I, I do like this. I think this is really good. Um, Fire Lancers are kind of trash after they're um, after they they've blown their load, and yeah, like before that they're obviously really good, but after that terrible. Um, so I think overall for the Chinese changes, the, these these are on point. On like I'm I'm happy with these. They didn't get any new units, but I mean at the end of the day, China's got like what six seven um, unique units, so they don't really need any new unique units. Uh, so let's move on. I'm going to take a swig of my Red Bull because it's uh, it's five o'clock in the morning. Dude, it's five o'clock in the morning. Come on. Can I, any any T-Pain fans in the chat right now? How about... What's her name? Jesse J? Jesse J, I think. All right. If, if you're not aware, check it out. Five o'clock in the morning. Just Google it. It's a song. It's good. All right. Uh, let, me, let me take a swig here. All right. We're good. Horseman. Renamed to Ghazi Raider. Uses a mace in combat. Let's check this out. Delhi Saltman. Cost increased from 100 food, 80... Oh, sorry. 100 food, 20 wood to 110 food, 30 wood. So a very slight cost increase. And HP has now been increased across the board. Damage has... Oh my God, look at the damage. Okay, don't underestimate this damage. This is huge. An extra four damage in Feudal Age? These units are wild. Wait, wait, wait. They get... Excuse me? Gain two, three, four bonus versus heavy? Unironically, you cannot make knights against the Delhi Sultan anymore. Do these beat knights? Attack speed changed from 1.88 to 2. Do these beat knights? Obviously, they don't beat them 1 versus 1, but do they beat them cost efficiently? They got a little mace. Oh, dude, they got a little mace. So, when it comes to cost, so they cost 140... And a knight is 240. <laughs> I like how increased effectiveness against armored units is considered a minus. So the... Uh, so... Delhi Sultanate... Wait, why is it plus two versus heavy? Oh, it's only plus two in, uh, in Feudal Age. Okay, that's not that big, actually. I thought it was plus four in Feudal Age. So they do 15 damage. Wait. Alright. Uh, we, we got to get our numbers right, okay? Is it 12 mace damage? Is it 13 mace damage? That's a big difference. That's a big difference. These are all... I'm, I'm trying to calculate right now. 12 plus 2. So we're, we're only doing 14 damage. And against a knight, which is going to be 4 base armor, you're doing 10 damage a hit. And a knight's got a lot of health. So I'm... Basically, I'm just trying, trying to work out, right? If I made only Ghazi Raiders and my French enemy made only knights... Who's going to win? And I think probably the French Knights would still win. Because worst case scenario. Uh, the thing, the reason why I'm, I'm bringing this up is because they can actually run down Knights. I can actually catch a Knight, surround it. Like if, if I've got, say, five or, or th this many Ghazi Raiders, right? I can now surround my enemy. I charge the enemy like this. Now that runs as fast as a Knight. So I want to charge the enemy. Oh god, I'm gonna try. So um, imagine this is a knight, right? Like I'm gonna be trying. Dude, are these sheep blocking me? Am I getting blocked by the sheep right now? I want to try and get in front. Oh, the Duke! How do I even? He, he's too, he's too good. I can't I can't defeat the AI. The AI is way too good. Uh. It, it, yeah, it's just not going to happen. Okay. Um, so I think this is something that we're going to have to look at uh, because 
I, I reckon these units could be pretty good now. Uh, combat out of the defense. Like, this is such a great change for Delhi, right? Like, I, I can't even... I can't even begin to think what consequences this has on the meta. Um, Delhi can now play extended feudal age. What are they going to do with all that gold? I don't know. But because they can now play extended feudal age, do we see them playing into Tower of Victory more? Or sorry, uh, Tower of Victory less and uh, Dome of the Faith more because they, they're just like, you know what? I'm just going to spend all my gold on scholars. I, I wouldn't be surprised because you can now spend a longer time. Uh, like, what, what even threatens you? Now, as the Delhi Sultan, nothing, right? Like you can deal pretty effectively with men at arms. You can deal effectively with knights. Um, that's that's incredible. Wow, cool changes. So uh, I I would predict that we probably just see Delhi players kind of look to play a bit more like the Abbasid dynasty, hang around in feudal for a bit longer, really secure sacred sites, build up scholar numbers, go castle. Who knows though? Let's we'll wait and see. Help text now clarifies technologies bypass age requirement uh, for the commander of the defender. Dome of the faith. Uh, help text. Actually, let's get that music back in. Yeah, let's just go quick match. Okay. Um, civilization description now states the 50% bonus HP on their fishing ships. They had 50% bonus health on their fishing ships. Are you serious? Okay. Elephants. While they are as big as boats, elephants are no longer attacked by dock emplacement arrows. Uh, you know, to the dev that worded that, hats off to you. I, I, I like that you provide the um, the opening there. You set that up very well. well <laughs> that's good. That's good. Updated targeting priority of elephants to prefer units over buildings. Really well done. That was very annoying. Uh, war elephant. So siege task weapon removed now uses its melee task against buildings. So... Old was siege task, 100 siege plus 100 versus buildings. New melee task, 50 melee plus 45 versus buildings, but a much faster attack speed. So, I don't know. I, I guess this, this, this is affected by armor. I don't actually know how this comes out in the scheme of things. And it looks like the same thing is coming in for the tower elephant as well. Uh, corrected an issue with the Tower Elephant Riders skipping Incendiary Arrows class. Uh, and... <laughs> uh, I, I don't know why, but I feel like somebody... Someone has someone different has contributed the Delhi Sultanate patch notes because they've, they've got a little bit more memes in there. Uh, added UI buff icon to units affected by zeal and scholars will no longer be selected first when cycling through. Building selections, wonderful changes. All right, so over, overall for the Delhi Sultanate, like... I, I'm going to be honest... There's a part of me that wants to become a deli main, dude. Like, this is crazy, dude. I can't believe this. I, I, I just want to... I want to really demonstrate this on paper. Why why I'm why I'm acting this way or why I'm behaving this way. So, let's say you're deli versus... So, deli versus HRE or deli versus... Let's just go with, like, versus French, right? Which is, which is considered um, traditionally, like, a, a pretty fun matchup largely about food control, but it could very quickly get turned on its head. Because all of a sudden, in the past, you were doing nine damage, plus one, which is the upgrade, versus three armor, plus one. Which means that you're doing either five or six damage, depending on upgrades, or, or I guess technically seven up seven damage, uh, depending, depending on upgrades. But now, so th this is the key number here, all right, that we're looking. Now, the, the middle number is going to be when, we've, when we're fully upgraded or when we're not upgraded at all for either of us. So now that's going to be changing to 13. And then plus one is your uh, your armor, or sorry, your uh, your upgrade. And then plus two. So we're, we're looking exclusively at feudal because that's when the power of the Delhi is, is really coming online. And we're versing the same thing for a knight, which is plus one. And all of our numbers stay the same. So now all of a sudden, we're doing 16 damage. Okay? So, and we're doing 16 damage against 4. So either we're doing 12 damage, we're doing 11 damage, or we're doing 10 damage. So we'd be doing 10 damage uh, if we didn't have... Is, wait, is that even right? Hold on. That's 15. 14, if we don't have that, plus that. Yeah, so 10, 10 11, or 12 damage. As you can see, there is almost an effective doubling of damage that is done by this new unit. Uh, uh, when it's horsemen versus knights. 
Now, obviously, you want to be fighting spears versus uh, knights, but you need to remember what happens in fights, okay? You have knights kill archers, or I should say cav kills archers. Archers kill spears, and spears kill cav, right? It's, it's the circle of life, the triangle. The problem is, if you don't kill the enemy knights, enemy knights will kill your cav, enemy knights will kill your archers, and their, their archers will kill your spears. So if you don't kill the cav in time, you lose. But now all of a sudden this is saying, well, actually you can you can actually hold against it. This is a significant boost in damage. So overall, I think this addresses a massive issue that the Delhi Sultanate have. Um, and I, I love it. I love it. This is, it's such an interesting change uh, for the civilization. And I'm confident a lot of Delhi players out there uh, are going to be very excited about that. I'm thinking my Fitzbros, I'm thinking my Grubbies. Um, who, who knows whether he comes back just to explore the new Delhi. I mean, maybe a day or two he might come back and say good day. Overall, I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. This, this makes so much sense. Uh, very, very well played to whoever thought that one up. All right, English. English. My, my main civilization at the moment. Campfire ability. All right. Let's have a look what we got here. Moved from the longbow to the men at arms. No longer requires research. Costs 25 wood to deploy. A maximum of five campfires can be deployed at any time. Campfires no longer provide healing and now provide a 30% sight range increase to units in the area. They also provide some natural sight range if no units are nearby. Developer note, the campfire ability wasn't getting much use. True, I, I don't think I ever once, re once researched it, uh, mainly because I was, I was a bit more of like a Castle Age orientated English player. Uh, and we wanted to revitalize the civilization with a new ability that helps the core roster shine. Instead, instead of providing raw power, this ability has multiple interesting scouting potentials, such as being put in stealth forests on or on tall terrain to enhance a scout even further. Note that these campfires are also attackable by the enemy, and only have one hit point, so they are best used as str at strategic times or as strategic times. Okay, so this is an interesting tech. Um, I'm, I'm trying to think about the best way to use it. I mean, in the late game, when you've got spring orders, it's going to be really, really good. Uh, so we know that it provides a sight range increase to units in the area, so that should in include all units. I suspect that's not going to be capped. So, you know your spring what's having a little bit of extra line of sight uh, is actually really good. If we were to draw what that looks like, and apologies for the flashbang. So let's say you've got your spring ults, right? And let's say you've got four spring ults, okay? And your enemy has got four spring ults as well. Okay, now if we were to do line of sight uh, as a portion of this, I'd be like, okay, let's let's go something like that. Let, 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 let's say maybe like this, Okay. Now, 25% line of sight, for anybody who doesn't know how big 25% line of sight is, go and look at the Holy Roman Empire um, outpost with, with a relic inside. So this essentially becomes, I mean, it's going to be hard for me to take it. Let's extend that out a little bit. Uh, so this essentially just goes from that to being like this uh, transparent selection to being so somewhere around here. Probably even a little bit further than that. Uh, obviously, the arc is slightly different. So what that means is for top-level players, I'm going to be able, in instead of just like f seeing the enemy springords and then right-clicking the springord because I'm so panicked by the springords, I'm going to see the springords. I'm going to tell these two guys, hey, can you guys attack this springord here? And then I'm going to tell this these guys, hey, can you guys attack these two spring this springord here? And that's going to give me an advantage because now when this guy moves forward with his springords, I'm already going to have my targets ready. And he's going to right click. He's going to select everybody. And I apologize because this is going to get messy if it's not already. And he's going to tell everybody right click over here, guys. And he's going to do that. And he's going to try and he's going to panic a little bit. Uh, and then but the problem is that he's already now missing two sprinkles. So I, I think that this has ramifications, large ramifications for the late game. I think this is a pretty solid um, thing. Now, obviously, this can be mitigated by the enemy by just carrying a scout with your army. But in the late game, are you really going to be doing that? Probably not. Uh, and it's held by the men at arms, not by the longbows anymore. And men at arms, you are going to be making quite often when you get into the late game as the English. So you're always going to have access to it. 25 woods, a relatively negligible amount in the late game. For the early game, I still think this provides relatively good utility, 
especially if you've got a scout in a, a stealth forest, as, as they mentioned. Yeah, it's a good change. I like it. I like it. This is this is a good, right? Like you've turned an ability that was once not used or rarely used into an ability that, that is used or at least should be used. So really nice design choice. Villager hunting bow range increased from 2.875 tiles to 5 tiles. Okay, so that means that your deer are going to get shot a little bit further away. Good change. Armor clad technology cost increased from 100 food, 250 gold, to 150 food, 350 gold. Good change. Armor cladding, I mean, it's it's a nerf to the English, but armor cladding is a really good technology, and I would be happy to pay 500 gold for it. Don't put the price up to 500 gold. I'm just telling you, I'd be happy to pay it. Like it's it's a great tech. It it is a it is a priceless technology. Wingard footmen now have proper tor have the proper torch damage for an imperial age unit and the king. Cost reduced from 150 150 to 120 120. Hello. Added an ability button for kingly presence on the king, which you can which can hover to see the range of the healing aura. Fixed a bug with the kingly presence. I like that kingly presence. Is that even a word? Did you just did you did you just make that word up? Be honest. Fixed a bug with the Kingly's Presence Aura radius to match intended size. Okay, so overall English changes, pretty small. It is an English nerf uh, for armor cladding. That's going to be the most noticeable thing uh, that you'll see here. Uh, overall campfire ability, it's a small thing, but it is a good thing. I, I do like this, so uh, very well played here. And I guess one thing to note is that if you're thinking, oh yeah, well, that's fine, I can just keep a scout with my army. What if the English player keeps a scout with their army? and then also has the campfire. Now they've got the line of sight advantage once again. So watch out for that. All right, let's move on to the French. Hulk has been renamed to the War Cog. Now the French used to have access to the, the Hulk early. So this is, I guess, an onage to that. An onage to that? You guys get what I mean. So it keeps plus one pierce armor and the cost is reduced from 120, 230 to 85, 230. The total cost is effectively 10% less resources, but realized in food only. Now, th this is an, a buff for the French war cog. But at the same time, it's not really. Because a lot of people are going to be like, oh my god, it's 35 food. It's like, you might not be aware, but if you're making a hulk, there's a good chance you've got like 10 fishing boats. And you're probably sitting on like 8,000 food. It's not a big deal, right? Like everybody's got food. Of course, at the top level, this is going to make a difference, a slight difference, because now you can squeeze the next, a, a, a Hulk a little bit earlier, or one less vill on, on food, all that kind of stuff. But overall, this doesn't really change much. I think this is a, a, an absolutely fine change, and it kind of keeps everything in the same theme. Um, new merchant guilds... Oh, I love new technologies. If, 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 if Like, I, I, I actually love new techs. What have we got here? Sorry, that was me trying to mute my mic. I don't know if you guys hear that. Apparently you do hear that. I'm looking at my Go XLR now. So you do hear that. So uh, we can talk about those devs all day because I'm so sick of those devs. Uh, no, not really. Uh, I, that was a misclick. Anyway, new merchant guilds tech. Uh, available in the Imperial Age, 200, 500. Active traders generate one gold every six seconds. Get the hell out. Affected by the French economic technologies discount. Available at the Royal Institute. What are you doing? So if we take original trade numbers, we're on Altai, French are trading one gold every six seconds. Every six seconds, so 93 seconds. So 93 divided by six is 15.5 gold per trip. An extra 15.5 gold per trip. God, that, that, geez, that could have been awkward. Um, that was very close to being the wrong thing. So 73 plus 15.5. Uh, is 88.5 divided by, uh, actually what, divided by uh, 93. And that takes us to 0.95 gold per second. Eh, it's not huge, but it's good. It's good. And it's a way that guarantees you've got like a really steady gold income always coming into you. And like, you think about this uh, let, let's times it by 60. 57 gold per minute. Infinite. Faster than an Imperial Villager with Wheelbarrow upgrade and like all, all three upgrades on the gold mine. French trade is actually legit. 
And it's available at the Royal Institute. Bro, oh my god, we're actually going to see French trade, like, just be disgusting. I unironically want to become a French main after seeing this. I'm not even kidding you. Oh, this is such a cool tech. Oh, this is such a cool tech. <laughs> it is expensive, but it's affected by the Royal Institute. And it also gets... I mean, you also get a free trader with it. Oh, this is this is gonna this is gonna trickle insanely quickly. I mean, it it looks good, but it's not that crazy. Like if you've got six traders, it's one gold every second. It's not that big. If you've got fifty, well, let's say sixty traders, you got ten gold every second, which is nice. I wonder how much it stacks up with the um the English farming tech. This is this is this is really cool though. Long guns technology. Oh no, that scares me. Damage bonus increase from 10% to 15% for gunpowder. Oh, that's okay then. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> Who cares about that? Okay. Ablatria gains plus one. It's, it's a water tech. <laughs> it's, a, it's a water tech. Oh, gosh. So they also added it to the, the landmark. Ablatria gained plus one range while Pavis is deployed. Fixed a bug. Dude, okay. I'm actually saying it. French are going to be overpowered. <laughs> Unironically, dude. French trade and arbitrages. Oh my lord, dude. I'm going to put all my traders on food and just laugh at my enemy as they're making farms and I'm making traders, dude. Oh, dude. This is crazy good. I don't Now I don't know what landmark to go. I think you have to go Royal Institute, right? Like, this is so good. Uh, so Pavis can now be activated while on Stonewall. <laughs> can you imagine Pavis on Stonewalls with their range and their reduced damage and their armor? It's like... Think about it, right? Like, if you're a Pavis right now, you've got, like, your 7 plus 7 on ranged armor. It's ridiculous. Is it 7 plus 7? It's something ridiculous. Or it's, like, like uh, 3 plus 7. Uh, and then you've got minus 66% damage. So enemy does, like, 23 damage. So that that comes down now uh, to to what? Well, I probably didn't choose the, the best <laughs> number for that. It looks like 24 damage. So down to 8. And then, then your armor comes in and it's down seven and then you, you've taken one damage. Like, you've taken the enemy from 28 damage down to one damage from the Pavis shield on the wall. That's crazy. All right, Military Academy now increases the production speed of the College of Artillery. Actually, is it Pavis shield that it gives you melee uh, armor or, or is it ranged armor? Because I know that they have, um, you, you have the unique technology uh, Gambesons, which gives you, yeah, melee armor by five. So Pavis shield gives you the plus... Uh, five ranged armor. Okay. So military now increases the production speed of the College of Artillery and corrected the keeps help text value of French influence bonus from 25 to 20%. Dude, I'm, I'm saying it right now. I actually love the design of the French. They're such a cool sieve. They've got so many bonuses that you just want to take advantage of. They're not those bonuses that are on the edge. They're bonuses that like you should always be taking advantage of. I love that, man. I love that. I love the French. Dude, I'm... Oh, man, I'm, I'm... Do I become a Frenchman? Am I, am I just becoming a Frenchman right now? I think I think this is it. I think I'm gonna become a French man. It's 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 so cool. It's such a cool sieve. All right, all right, all right, all right. Overall, French changes. Uh, if you haven't already uh, heard, I absolutely love them. I'm a big fan of Merchant Guild's technology. Anything that, that the devs can do to make civilizations more unique, I support especially technology. Technology is a great way to flex a civilization without changing it overall. You don't have to do any changes uh, to, to you know, carrying a mace, right? Like it, it's very simple. Just add a new tech, get a new art, change a few numbers in the back end and you're good. So I think this is a great way to uh, to change to, to change the uh, the French. And I think this really gives them a bit more identity and, and pushes them down that trade line even more. So overall, I love this. I think this is great. Holy Roman Empire. Sorry to all the Giga Chads out there. Not, not much for you guys. Devoutness and Benediction Technologies. Benediction has been removed from the game and merged into Devoutness. Devoutness now provides 10% resource resource gathering. Dude, why did you reduce why did you remove Benediction? We should have get rid of Devoutness. Benediction's such a cool name for a tech. Devoutness. I, I'm gonna call it Benediction. I don't care what you say. I'm in love with Benediction. Uh, Devoutness has now provides 10% gathering resources, 25% construction speed instead of just 15% construction speed. Wait, does that mean that we've now got Devoutness, which, and then there's also that other technology as well? No. Okay. Okay, never mind. Um... It corrected issues where the Great Palace of Flensburg wonder could not use emergency repair while under the Palace of Swabia landmarks influence. Interesting bug. 
And relics are now ejected when docks are destroyed. I mean, good changes. I'm curious. If I destroy my uh, my Regnitz Cathedral, do the relics get re ejected? Because that's still a bug um, that affects us in FFA all the time. So I, I don't know if that's going to be a uh, an issue still. Hopefully it gets fixed. M um, who knows? Maybe the Regnitz Cathedral is considered a dock and that fixes it. That, that That's an earlier joke uh, to do with uh, the elephants. Where, where was it? There you go. All right. Uh, so not really much to say about the Holy Roman Empire other than like, yes, this is a good change and you're reducing down the... Like, I, I don't even think people were getting the... There, there was some upgrade. People just weren't getting it. I think it was the construction speed upgrade. It's like, it, it was a bit of a meme. Like, it's, it, it, yeah, it's, it's nice for like a keep or something like that, but I don't think people were really getting it. Okay, so Malians. Big changes. Big changes to the Malians. Okay. Fort of the Huntress Landmark now properly has five fire armor. Warrior Scout regeneration is reduced. Wonderful. I don't know if that's going to be enough, but I will take it. A reduced movement speed in Feudal Age from 1.88 to 1.75. Definitely the right call here. Those things were faster than, were as fast as a horseman. Um, veteran upgrade now grants 100% bonus damage. Excuse me? Veteran upgrade now grants 100% bonus damage versus ranged units in Castle Age. So these guys become horsemen that cost food. Incredibly fast. Not anymore, but fast heal like crazy can gather can gather a uh, deer to me i don't see any reason why a malian player now doesn't just go 25 scouts in the feudal age into a castle age maybe make a few archers or something like that and then get the veterancy upgrade and just absolutely shit on any, everything i mean it, it's only v versus ranged units so it's not that big but it's still pretty big damage uh, that feels dangerous 100% bonus damage versus range units they're really good now against that and they, they they've got like 10 11 damage i'm pretty sure so that's a lot canoe tactics technology cost reduced from 100 250 down to 50 125 and the research time is reduced from 30 to 20 i don't actually know what canoe tactics does i'm assuming it's in the dock Canoe tactics. Archer ships fire an additional two javelin weapons. Okay, cool. Cattle. Villager cattle gather rate reduced from 0.9 to 0.81. Cattle's getting nerfed again? Okay. Food gathering tech now applies to the passive income of cattle garrison in ranches. Food gathering tech? So if... If I get this straight, if I'm playing the Marlians on Altai and I make myself a whole bunch of cows in ranches and I start getting the the food upgrade techs, that's going to increase the amount of gold that that's generating? Okay, so I can't make cattle ranches yet. So let's go Mansa Quarry. Let's get a couple houses down because we need houses for our cows. They've got to live somewhere. It's not like they've got ranches to go to. So it should be 48 or 28 food a minute, uh, but 48 with the Grand Flani Corral. So let's just put that down because we're making cows. Now I did collect a little bit of food here. So I'm just going to put a whole bunch of vills into queue just so that I've got lots of food spaced. So ignore the 31 food. Actually, no, it, it will eventually rise. So it, sh it should rise uh from 28 it should rise to 48 food a minute because that's 20 food per minute so up to 42 oh it's not gold a minute is it it's food a minute so up to 49 we did collect a little bit of food down here so it is going to skew us up to 53 but that'll come back down there we go 43 so i think that's been about a minute now so it's going to kind of hover around this area. So let's say we get horticulture and fertilization because we're Giga Chads. That should come up. I wonder if it reflects on here. 
It does. Up to 36 a minute. Now, does that 36 a minute... Does that affect... Or does that extra 15% affect the 20 food per minute? Probably not. I think that's, that's given afterwards, right? So that just becomes 56 a minute. But what this does do is if you don't want to go for the Grand Fulani Corral, it actually makes cattle very strong. Which is interesting, right? Because it's not necessarily keeping everything in line with, uh, with, with going into the Grand Fulani Corral. Because basically, you've gone from 28 food per minute up to 36. And so it's 48 food per minute up to 36. So you're kind of closing the gap on that. That's pretty good. And then when Imperial Age comes through, I mean, we'll just do it for the sake of Imperial Age. Because we do normally pick up this upgrade. Ex excuse? Oh, because there's three cows in there. Yeah, of course. So it went from... Did it go from 34 to 36? No, no, no. Okay, there you go. 40. Are there any other food upgrades that I'm missing? I don't think so. I think that's it. So 40 a minute's pretty good, right? Like, and you've got 20 of these bad boys? So you're talking 800 food there without the Grand, F Grand Fulani Corral. With the Grand Fulani Corral, though, it goes up to 1,200 food a minute. So... Let's, let's just write this down, because you guys know I'm a sucker for writing things down. So, 40 F a minute. Times 20 equals 800 F a minute. Uh, or we can do... With this one here, so 40 and that becomes 60. So, 60 F a minute. So, it's a pretty significant jump. Times 20 equals 1200 F a minute. And at this point in the game... Uh, villager with a wheelbarrow upgrade... Let's just go with eight of these guys. And let's rally a couple of villas down here. Let's delete these guys because it's too far away. Okay, and we're going to delete these cows. Delete these cows again. Can I not delete the cows? We don't want to gather from them. Okay, so we're going to take eight vills here. We're going to get ready to move them into... Alright, so none of them have collected at this point. So at five minutes, we're going to start gathering and go. Oh, that did not work the way I expected it to work. So we'll call it like 503. So we've got eight vills. Uh, I'm taking guesses on how much you guys think they're going to be gathering per minute here. Um, I don't... Th this shouldn't be bringing in any food because it's dead on the ground. So if we have eight vills uh, per minute, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with like, I think maybe f uh, 51 food. I'm going to go with 51 F a minute for each vill. So we're waiting until the six minute mark. But, it, but even then, I guess we don't even have to wait until the six minute mark. Like we can wait a little bit after that. Because th this figure won't ever go more than... Um, it won't ever go more than, than a minute, right? Like it's always just going to be that. And we can we can watch and see where it's hovering around. Especially once the, the food that's closer grows back in. It's not a whole lot of walking distance here. 420, 435, 450, 480. So I see a top of 480. But then it comes down to 360. 480 and 360. All right, here we go. And up to 480. And down to 360. And it seems to just be chilling out at 360. So... 
I don't know whether I, I, I would be very I, I suspect it's probably 360 is, is where where it's at so let, let's call it 360 a minute so if I'm going to calculate that so 360 divided by 8 uh, gives us 45 food a minute which doesn't seem that hot so 45 food a minute uh, keep in mind this food is rateable this food can be killed um, and so if we calculate that so we can just say 1200 uh, divided by uh, 45 gives us 26 villages on food in the late game that is kind of crazy <laughs> that, that's actually very good uh, and then 800 divided by 45 is 17.7 uh, vils on food how much was 1200 0.6 um, it is the Grand Fulani Corral worth it? Probably not. You're getting some good numbers already from that, but that's a definitely a nice way to make your investment a little bit, uh, a little bit better. That that's incredible. It, that that is incredible how much that is. Like that that that's actually crazy. This is this is a good change. This is a really good change. I mean, if if we were to compare this to before, right, twenty eight food a minute times twenty. You're talking, what, 560? Oops, 28 times 20. Uh, and then divide that by 45, 12.4 villages. So you're going from 12.4 villages. This is, a, this is a five villager buff. And that's raw. Uh, if, if you were to take it as a 48 food a minute times 20, uh, which is what it would be previously with the Grand Fulani Corral, uh, then you're looking at... Uh, what is it? 960. So 960 divided by 45 uh, is 21 villages, 21.3. Uh, so you can see that there was a large difference before. If you didn't go for the Grand Fulani Corral, your castle was not very good. Uh, and the Grand Fulani Corral was a great way to buff that dis difference up. You almost uh, effectively doubling your food income from that. Whereas now your food income is not doubled. It goes up by a, a half. Uh, and it's already significant without that. So I think this is a great change for the Malians. Really, really nice to see. And definitely encourages them to move more into this cattle. One of the things I hope that we see players doing with their cattle, all right, is walling it in. I, I know it seems weird, but all I want you to do, right, is like throw down your ranch ranches. So let let's just say you throw down... Get away. Oh my God, it's fucking Altai, dude. Where can I even put them, dude? Where, like, it's, it's Altai. There's no space on this map. You know what? I'm going to put them right here. Delete these bad boys. Get out of here. So one of the things I would love to see players do is just like if they, when they put their ranches down, right? So here you've got six ranches. So that's a total of uh, 20. And you know what? Like, let's let's just call it seven. Um, and let's get in a jiffy down. All right. So and let, let's get get some cows down here just so just so we can uh, make it look a bit authentic. So what I want to see people do is just wall it in. It doesn't need a big wall. Just a nice, simple little one like that. I mean, you, you, if you really want to go crazy, you can stonewall that bad boy in as well. But just something like that is going to be... Fuck off, wolf. Sick of your shit. Uh, let's get two of these guys. You guys go over there. So just walling in your um, in your cattle like this is just gonna give you so much, like the, the work like it's got 500 health on it, bro. Like th this shit is gonna get sniped out so fucking quickly. If, if I if I see any Malian players out there with cows, I will fucking come to your house and I will eat your cows. Okay. If you want to go even crazier though, I'd be tempted to say, well, I mean, it's not gonna cost you a lot. Let, let's count how much it costs to do. Okay. 100 stone. Oh, it didn't come out all the way. Hundred twenty stone. Two hundred. Didn't go all the way. You really got to make it go all the way, don't you? There you go. So I think that was 120 and then 40. So how, I don't even know how much stone I paid. Actually, I, I can tell you how much stone I paid once we build the wall. Just like Donald Trump. 
but this time we're, we are actually going to have to pay for this one. So, um, sorry. You stonewall it in? Like, because you, when you think about it, at the end of the, the, end of the day, if you're playing a, a long game, this is going to be a persistent target for your enemy, a massive threat. All right, we, we spent 440 stone on this. I think it's only 440 stone. Yeah, 440 stone on this. To me, this just makes so much sense. Is it, are we playing against the English AI? It's French AI. Dude, look at their TCs. Go on ham. Um, yeah, like this is a persistent uh, reality for you uh, throughout the game. Is, it, is that your enemy is going to be trying to fight against this? So it just makes total sense. And like the income that you're pulling in from this is like, this is 17 and, and 17.7 villages. There's a lot of resources that's coming into your base. So, I think overall, oh, 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 I totally forgot. Hit it. I don't know why I'm making music and I don't know if it's DMC8, but it is popping off right now. 822, 867. Should it be up that high? 898. How much do we say? 800 food a minute. 913. <laughs> 182 a minute? Is that even legal? 182 a minute? Did you guys see that? I completely forgot about the Griot Barra. Okay. Well, I'm glad I didn't forget. 182 a minute uh just very casually is that right that, that that's without this oh my god could you imagine it underneath the grand Fulani corral that that's gonna be some crazy numbers and it's only 300 gold i mean i say it's only 300 gold like it like you've got infinite gold in the late game you don't uh okay wow i didn't expect to go that into in depth with cattle but uh overall that is a great change Imported army cost increased from 100 250 to 150 350. Good change. Update updated civilization bonuses text to include that research time of veteran unit technologies is reduced by half. Hold on, updated civilization bonuses text to include that research time of veteran. I didn't know that. There you go, D dude. You got to tell me these things. I didn't know that. Corrected an issue where the UI would be hidden after researching poisoned arrows. Oh yeah, that that was annoying. Uh, tech tree. Corrected an issue where age two towns and a siege tower ram were missing from the tech tree. Okay. So overall, I think the Malian, the Malian boys and girls out there are going to be loving this change. Um, I mean, it, it doesn't really change the sieve that much, but I, for me, I can see a very clear play style here for the Malians. And I, I think I wouldn't be surprised if we head back to when the Malians initially came out. I remember Demu was doing um, 2TC Fast Castle into Cattle. I wouldn't be surprised to see that bad boy coming back right now. I wouldn't be surprised to see it at all uh, with, with, with lots of cattle. I, I like these changes. Overall, good changes. Mongols. My god, how many more sieves do we have? Mongols? Oh, oh my god, we got so many more things to do. Dude, we're, we're an hour and 20 minutes into this video already. Oh my lord, I'm sorry, guys. I, I mean, I, I hope you're watching this. I, I mean, I was, I was about to say, I hope you're watching this on like your commute somewhere. And I'm like, bro, if you've got an hour and 20 minute commute, I feel for you, man. I, you know, back back when I, before I, I became a full-time content creator and I had a, a government job before COVID hit, actually, uh, which is kind of crazy to think how long ago that was now. Jeez, jeez. I've been doing this content creation thing for a while. I um I used to work in the city and I lived out in... Uh, I still lived in the city, um, but not in the CBD. And I think I, I commuted and it was about 45 minutes every day. No, that was a long time, but it, 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 there's a, it depends, right? Like for the people that are commuting in New York, I feel terrible, right? Because you've got like mental health is just like going crazy. Um, homelessness, which obviously goes hand in hand with mental health is just off, off the chain. Um, so commuting is probably a little bit weird. Whereas like for me in Australia, there is an element of, of that, but there's also an element of like, I get to look outside and it's nice. There's trees, there's bodies of water. And I just, and I just breathe. I'm like, yeah, this isn't too bad. This is a nice little start to my day. Now, don't get me wrong. 
working from home is a million times better and going for a walk every morning is is, is much better but uh you know there you go hopefully you got some drongo for you on the on the commute wherever you are uh anyway mongol lancer renamed to Keshik, available in the feudal age so now they've got the Keshik and now they've got the mangadai uh, so it's available oh God, it's available in the feudal age oh no we're doing this again really for anybody who doesn't know when age of empires 4 was in early beta uh mongols had the lancer in the feudal age and it was so annoying to, to deal with double production lancers yeah don't even start available in the feudal age cost decreased from 140 to 120 80 so 140 100 down to 120 80 so the same as a sofa Attack is decreased from 1924-29 to 15-19-23. So not only did the attack get reduced, but the scaling got reduced. So it does four less damage. Feudal Age is the main thing I'm looking at here. HP decreased from 192-32-70 to 145. Okay, so these are pretty big nerfs. Attack speed improved. Yeah, I like that... See, this is the awkward thing about using this whole attack speed thing. Improved, increased, decreased. If you you technically decrease the attack speed, but it, it technically increases the attack speed. You know, it's it's a bit awkward. Um, excuse me? Restores 3 HP each time it attacks. Oh, are we a MOBA now? Do we have... is There's lifesteal? Lifesteal is coming to Age of Empires 4. This is so big, I want to put it on the thumbnail. That's how big that is. Lifesteal in AoE 4. Every time you attack, you get 3 HP back. Very interesting. Now, I, I suspect that's not going to be affected by herbal medicine. Because then we'd be healing at 3.6. Is it 3.6? No, no, actually, it'd be like 4.2 or something. 4.3, something silly. Uh, train time decreased from 35 seconds to 30 seconds. Obviously, that matches the cost. And now there is a new technology available. Oh, God. Oh. Available in the Imperial Age. Cost is negligible. Plus one HP per attack. Now, I'm going to assume that what it's talking about is not every time that it attacks, it gets one HP. Because if it is, then we are going to have some demons on our hands. Can you imagine like that one Mongol Kashik that's got 7,000 attack or 7,000 health? Um, no, I don't think that's the case. Uh, I, I think that the way that this is going to work is for every attack point that it's got, uh, so 23, you will get one HP, which isn't that crazy. Because like, remember that there's ways to buff this up, right? You get 23 attack plus three from the um, from the blacksmith. So you're up to 26. Uh, you get the step, well, not the step, but out the um, the other landmark that they've got, the coral tie. Uh, and that now you're up to like 32. So it's 32, 32 uh, health. Not too bad. New improved. Oh, of course there's a new improved. Plus two HP. <laughs> so hold on. How much were we at? Uh, I, I'm going to assume that it was like th with let's look because this is an imperial age tech if i remember correctly yeah imperial age tech so both of these are imperial age tech so you get extra health per attack so i'm gonna go with like an extra if it's 23 up to 26 add the 25 percent from the coral tie you're talking about 32 32 times 2 64 so now you've got 64 uh, extra health and then stack that with the biology upgrade as well uh that's a lot that's a lot. Uh, okay, in a jiffy. Do they look different? I don't think they'd look different, right? It's just a, it's just a night. That's just a night. That's all. Um, heals after every attack performed. Okay, so let's age up. We'll go coral tie, and we'll just put it over here so we don't get that attack speed. Uh, and white stupa, why not? Because we need a Nuvu. Alright, so... We've got this one. Oh, it increases attack speed by 10% as well. This increases attack speed by 20%. Is it really that big? Bro. 
their attacks are 0.46 per second. Ex ex excuse me? That, no, nah, hold on. That, is that bugged? That's got to be bugged. That's got to be bugged. That's bugged. That's bugged. That's bugged. That's got to be bugged. Did I, did I just read that? I, I, I probably just read it wrong. I probably just read it wrong. Or it's referring to the charge. Oh, it's referring to the charge. Okay. So it's 1.38 attack speed. Okay, that's fine. Rural tire. Okay, so we go from 1.38 attack speed <coughs> down to 1.25 and then with an improved one, it's just going to be easier just to make a new stable over here. So improved takes that down to 1.2. So one attack every 1.2 seconds. Doesn't seem that bad. Um, we're on 45 health. Two ten health. Ah, oh, I know what it's. It, it, it's oh, it's the the heal after every attack is increased by two. Oh, okay, okay, okay. All right. I thought it was increasing the attack pool, oh, the the health per pool. Plus one HP per attack. Oh, I get it. Okay. So I take... No, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So for every attack that I do, instead of it being... Because it was... What was it? Three before? Three HP per attack. Now it's four, and then it becomes five per attack. So we're, we're going to take some damage here. It's going to be annoying. Okay, so we'll go down to uh, six health, or down to here. And now I'm going to attack. Turn around. Boom. Yeah, so it does. So it heals for five. So basically, you're healing for five damage here instead. And increases attack speed by 15%. And on top of that, you can get biology, I'm assuming. Where is it? Biology. Improved biology. By 30%. So 273. This is, uh, is going to get wild pretty quickly. It's... That is very interesting. Okay. Let's jump out of that. I, I feel like we should give this a term. The HP per attack. Plus one... Like, maybe it should say plus one restored HP per attack. Because to me, I was like, they're just adding hit points to the unit. But maybe that's health. No, it's very much HP. Okay. Uh, I don't know how I feel about the strength of that tech. They're armored units. They've got lots of health. So at the end of the day, they're going to be alive for long. And being alive for long means that you can take advantage of lifesteal. Wow. Okay. I think that that is going to be an incredible technology against everything except spears against everything except spears is, is how i should have said that um yeah that, that's uh that's pretty cool that's pretty cool i like it all right uh new improved yam network technology available in the imperial age heals traders one health every two seconds while within yam aura uh i don't think this is going to be really that big um it's nice, don't get me wrong, but in the Imperial Age, like, everyone's got knights, and I'm just going to be one-shotting traders with my knights anyway, so it's not really going to do much. At most, it means, like, one extra hit to kill a trader. Not going to really do much. Uh, Cruel Tide Landmark corrected issue where the Landmark wasn't healing allied units. Silver Tree discount, or Landmark, discount and production speed reduce from 50 to 40%. Good change. Honestly, really good change. Silver Tree is busted as hell. Um, this is a great way to change it. Okay, Khan's Scouting Falcon ability can now be summoned from range at players... Ah, oh, we got to try that. I'm sorry, we got to try it. You know we got to try that. Uh, let's have a look and see. 
So the cooldown is reduced from 75 seconds to 60 seconds and can now see over the tops of trees. Can it? Couldn't it always see over the tops of trees? Or does it mean like before you... I, I, thought, I thought it could always do that. I forgot to change it to a... Uh... There we go, concealed. Okay, so um, piracy technology costs reduced uh, down so they've halved that cost and reduced the research time and stone commerce technology in the Imperial Age. Let's just have a look. We're going to throw our, our Falcon here. That's got a pretty good range on it, actually. So Khan comes in. He sees the enemy. Maybe you've got like an outpost here and you can, you can just go boom. Oh my God, that's so nice. Oh, that's so busted. Oh, dude, that, that's a massive buff to Mongol early game. That's that's crazy. You don't have to run the Khan in anymore. You just like bring him to the back, throw out the Falcon. What's the cooldown on that? That seems is that 60 seconds. Not bad. That's really, really annoying. And your, your enemy... Oh my God, they're going to be pulling their hair out, dude. That's so good. That's actually really nice. It's a small little thing, but it changes. Like It, it just makes it so much nicer for the Mongol players now. I think BC's going to love that. Gosh, that's going to be so annoying. Stone Commerce Tech. Cost increased from 153.50 to 300.700. Good change. Cost research time increased. Improved stone... Literally, they just increased the, the cost of it. I love it. That, that's exactly what they should have done. Uh, for anybody who doesn't know, that is the technology that allows or it increases... I think it just gives you the ability to have stone in the late game on your trade. That's it. Really nice. Added Court Architects. Oh, they get Court Architects now. La -de -da. That That's a 30% increase on uh, building health. Packed Buildings. Go step right out and pasture. Pack time reduced from 5 seconds to 1 second. Is that... Unpack time? It is unpack time. Unpack and pack time. That's so nice. I'm at the main, main town center. I'm assuming that's still the same. Yeah, okay. Uh, fixed a bug where packed buildings were getting repaired at the same rate as siege weapons. <laughs> they will now be repaired at the same speed as other buildings. Fixed a bug where packed buildings had a large minimap icon. They did have a very large minimap icon. Okay, yeah, it's it's going back. It's funny because they reduced the the size of all of the minimap icons down, but they forgot packed build. Oh, yeah, unpacked buildings. Um, or oh, sorry, packed buildings. Uh, that's very funny. Uh, new Mangadai icon is added to help players differentiate Mangadai horse archers from other horse archers in the game. Yeah, there was actually a point where um the Mongols did have horse archers. They both had horse archers early on. Uh, the Mongols and the Rus. Um, so now if we go have a look at the Mongols in the archery range. So they now have a new, very, very uh, Mangadai-esque, very Mangadai-looking uh, icon. Improved military academy, uh, oh, sorry, fixed a bug where light junk wasn't displaying a death animation. Improved military academy by correcting out-of-date help values and, and value, or help text and values. Fix an issue where the Mongol AI could gather wood for too long at the start of a match. And fix an issue with the Mongol AI's packed buildings failed to unpack again when relocating. That That is very annoying, but I don't think it, it's just the AIs that get that. All right, so Mongol tech overall, uh, I think it's going to be one that we'll have to see how it plays out. Um, it's important that I don't highlight too much the effects of this Imperial Age technology. It's not going to be a big deal. Uh, I don't think too much. It's going to be nice to have, don't get me wrong, because these are large increases, but whether this is actually big, I'm sure the devs have, have worked it out and they're probably pretty happy with it. Um, Mongols have now got access to what is essentially a sofa warrior. Uh, slightly different, obviously. It's got lifesteal instead. Um, I don't like it. But I think, if anything, this does make the Mongols a little bit... Or obviously makes them a lot stronger in the Feudal Age. May orientate them more to playing a larger trade game as well. I think trade's going to be quite... I think trade's actually pretty good at the moment. To me, the, the fact that you get gold a lot quicker now, and it's not just like a big jump in gold, but rather a small trickle... Um, or I say a small trickle, but it's it's like you, you get... Trade is now safer. Trade is... Uh, the income is more regular. It's like there is a lot going for it. All right, let's... um Yeah, so uh, overall, I think this is a, this is a good change. Like, I, I, I like the idea of the Kashyyyk. I think it's really cool. Um, I, I'd love to just see a little bit more uniqueness to the unique units, if that makes sense. Um, so in the same way that the sofa looks so visually different from 
the Lancer. I'd love to see the Kashik look that different, which I'm sure will come in time. You know, like at the end of the day, this is season five and they've probably just, they, they've thrown this together and that, that's probably a bit more of an update when you're doing that kind of thing. All right, the Ottomans. Let's take a look. Uh, we've got 765611. Oh, it's, it's Rat Queen. I like how it was uh, Licity, Licity up here. And then down here, we've got these numbers uh, that are the developer. So Rat Queen throwing out some uh, some updates here for us. So Twin Minaret Madressa Landmark. I want to... I, I, I have... <laughs> I tell you what, I, I hate my... Uh, I didn't even know what it is. I have like a, an overpowering burden to go back and see the time that it was posted. Twin Minaret Madressa Landmark adjusted the initial berry spawn from spawning every 20 seconds to every 35 seconds. Oh no, that's initial, initial berry spawn. Okay. Okay. Um. So 35 seconds, respawn rate, respawn rate remains at 120 seconds. So basically they're just making it so that you throw four villagers on the landmark and you forget about it. I think that's it. It's, it's either three or four, uh, but it's one of the two. Uh, you, you throw the villas on the landmark and that's it. Forget about it. And I like that. That That's good because it, to be honest, it wasn't optimal before because they spawned 20 seconds apart. So you would need to throw like more villages on there to make it optimal and then like pull them off. And it was just, it, it felt awkward. Whereas now the most optimal thing is put four villas on there and just do it. Uh, landmark is intended to sustain a suspif suspif uh, <laughs> specific number of villages with the old placement rate players could put additional villages on the landmark right after construction to provide an extra burst of food. Exactly. Um, all right, so Sipahi has been... Oh my god, they increase... Oh my lord, look at the amount of wood that you have to pay for the Sipahi now. 110, 20 wood to 120 food uh, and 40 wood. Hit points increased. Oh, this is massive. Damage increase. It's that same case from before. Remember the one that we were talking about with the Delhi, um, the Delhi unit? The, uh, what's, what was it called? The, the Ghazi Raider or something like that? Uh, same, same idea here. Um, so increase in damage is, is is absolutely massive because this goes through armor. Uh, speed damage or speed reduced. Speed reduced for the Sapahi. Attack range. Attack range increased? What? We wanted to make this unique unit stand out further from the standard horseman. In the increased range makes it much more effective raiding unit as it's able to focus fire. It's it's like the um it, it it's like the Abbasid uh, spearman now. It's got extra range on the attack? What? I think I got that. No, I didn't. AI intermediate. Okay. The new Great Bombard emplacement. Ooh. Ooh. Hold on. Okay, okay. All right. We'll get to you. We'll get to you. Uh, did I put cheats on? I didn't put cheats on, did I? I did put cheats on. Oh, I didn't put resources on. Oh, I didn't give myself resources. Uh, I'll just attack this this sheep to demonstrate. Oh my god. I, I need to know if you can go too deep. Hold on. I, we gotta we gotta go back up. I don't actually know the cheats for the resources, and I'm sure you guys do. Uh, so apologies for not just doing that, but I, I don't know the cheats for it. I just know the cheats for, uh, for movement speed. Or for, um, for speed. I got a cheat for speed. Uh, that's an old school reference. Need for speed, dude. Need for speed underground. How good were the, was the original Need for Speed underground games? I don't know if there were any more. I just remember Need for Speed underground, dude. I was, how old was I? 13 years old when it came out? I think, I think 13 years old. Can I double check? Thirteen years old, baby. Uh, when Need for Speed Underground came out, and that was like, it was such a revolutionary game, dude. Amazing soundtrack. Cheats are not enabled for this game, bro. I... All right, I'm not doing it. Uh, two times is too too much. Uh, we are. We're just gonna assume that this is this is big, right? Like th this is big. New Great Bombard emplacement replaces cannon emplacements on keeps. Costs a lot. A little bit more than than what your no normal one does. 100 range damage with greater effect. Oh my god, it's got bonus damage versus buildings. Oh, <laughs> that is so sick. That is so sick. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. Oh, that's actually so good. That's going to be really annoying to deal with in the late game. Because what happens in the late game is you put outposts everywhere on the map and put cannon emplacements on it. 
And the cannon emplacements just laugh at each other as they can't kill each other, whereas this bombard emplacement can. Oh, that's so funny. Oh, that's really cool. Grand Galley now has the gunpowder unit tag to make it clearly communicate the upgrades that apply to it. Now moves towards the player when attempting to garrison units inside it after being upgraded to a military academy and fixed a bug where select all military ships wasn't selecting the Grand Galley. Okay, fair enough. Improved some of the Vizier points, or underused Vizier points, field work. Healing aura now scales per age to one, one, two, three health per second. I do like that. I do like that. That's good. Genissary Company now spawns an additional two Genissaries from the Capital Town Center in addition to the Genissaries at military schools. So it means that in the f in the Castle Age, you could potentially go for a 10 Janissary timing push. Bro, I'm telling you, I, I don't know why people aren't doing this. Go, like, play Ottomans, open up with, like, a, a few horsemen, start making knights in the Castle Age, throw down four military schools, click the Janissary Company button, and just destroy the enemy. Trade bags now also applies to the gold generated by the Salt and Honey Trade Network. Eh, it doesn't really do anything, though. Like, that, that's still a meme. Um... I mean, it's not really a meme. Like, trade bags are still... It's a really good tech. It's just that... Will people actually go into it? I think that they probably will. Honestly, if anything, um, the sheep need a buff, right? Like, uh, when was the last time you saw people go sheep, dude? The opportunity cost is just so high with Vizier points. And that, that's the thing you got to remember, right? Like, there's no game I'm going to be like, yeah, I'm going to take my sheep when it's like I could be getting three health a second in Imperial Age on field work. That, like, that, that, that is ludicrous, by the way. It, for anybody who, who doesn't know, like, three health per second on 100 units. It, this means that mangonels are useless. I mean, they're not, not really useless, but, like, it, it mitigates a lot of damage that a mangonel does. Uh, but remember, it only applies once. That, that's the other thing to note with, it, with this healing aura. It only applies once. You can't stack this. So it's not going to be like, oh, my God, 3,000 health per second. No, it doesn't work like that. Uh, meta. Health now scales per age. Instead of a flat 180, it's 160, 180, 200. So we're nerfing... We're nerfing the Ottomans in the Feudal Age. Interesting. Change the toggle text on the Metadrum abilities to correctly reference the toggle state. Uh, fix the requirement text on the Ottoman Trade Bags Imperial Council technology to reference the correct level. Shipping routes plus 10% trade and transport move speed now applies to fishing boats. And Tech Tree... Corrected an issue where H2 Town Center, Siege Tower, and Ram were missing from the tech tree. Corrected an issue where incorrect cost was displayed on the Siege Workshop. Okay, so overall for the Ottoman changes, very interesting decision here. Uh, Sipahi actually going to be a legit unit, and it's not just a cloned horseman like that actually looks different, but it just is the exact same. Um, I, I do like this. And I think now... Now that you've got an increased attack range, it buffs up the Sapahi in another way. Uh, I love all the calculators we've got here. Let me just uh, fix that up. So, what am I talking about? You guys know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about... That's not what I wanted. I'm talking about... By the way, how haven't they still fixed these flags? This is just... You're just, you're just triggering me at this point. Like, we could just make this a little bit longer, can't we? We could just put these two flags down here and the Delhi flag here. Couldn't we? Couldn't we? Come on. Um, so, the Sapahi have access to a unique technology, um, or unique, uh, ability, uh, which allows them, we, we can't see it here, but it allows them to, um, gain attack speed at the cost of melee defense. But now, all of a sudden, we have units that don't rely on their melee defense because they have an increased attack range. So, if you're attacking from behind the other Sipahi, all of a sudden, the Sipahi on the front line are going to be more vulnerable, but the Sipahi on the back line are going to be A-OK. -okay. So whether we see players like utilize like or, or individually click their Sipahi and get, OK, you're you're in, you're on the back line, have increased attack speed because it's a, it's a very small burst, right? Like it's like five or ten seconds. It's not huge. So I think this is this is a buff to the Sipahi in a lot of ways that people might not recognize. Um, but I, I like this change. I think this is a wonderful change uh, for the Sipahi. Um, I love I love the Great Bombardment placement. The Genissary changes are really good, and the fieldwork changes are great for the Vizier point. Uh, the meta it drives more of a Castle Age approach here, even though it's not huge, it still definitely affects it. So overall, I think the Ottomans, Ottoman changes, and and the Twin Minaret, Twin Minaret Madrasa spawn just makes it easier on on me 
uh, to to get that uh, that berry spawn. I like the Ottoman changes. I like them. I'm not inspired to become an Ottoman main, but I can definitely see like where the game plan for them can go right now. And I do like that a lot. Let's have a look at the second page. We didn't forget it. Don't worry. Of course, I, I am very well aware of it. So it's going to be the Rus. Oh, gosh, the, God, the Rus. What do we got here? Hunting cabins. Develop a note. We have made a pass on hunting cabins to make them less punishing, easier to understand, and better balanced. So I'm hoping they reduce the cost and reduce the build time. Let's have a look. Hunting cabins with overlapping auras no longer suffer a penalty to gold income. Oh, God. Instead, trees are claimed by hunting cabins. This means that a tree in an aura of multiple hunting cabins will only generate gold for the first cabin placed. This is really nice. This is really good because the way that it works, the way that it previously worked was that it, you, there was actually like an algorithm that happened. Um, and what, what would happen was that, uh, what, what map am I looking for? Hideout. Uh, what would happen, uh, was that you would be punished for putting them close to together. So you, you would always aim to like make, sh make sure none of them intersected on their, well, not intersected on their gold circles, but not you, your gold circles didn't intersect any other hunting cabins because that would drastically, uh, hurt you. So let's take a look and see what that UI change looks like right now. So we go for a classic, a classic Ross hunting cabin here on hideout of course this is a perfectly balanced map with a perfectly balanced civilization uh, and let's get in a jiffy going just a very nice 66 trees gathered here uh how much gold a minute is that going to give us though oh we don't um does it not produce gold a minute until we uh we can use gold a minute let's fix that up a bit doesn't display gold a minute anymore? Uh, 18? 18 a minute? Okay, it's going to be a while before it comes up. Bro, look at tier 3. Yo, look at tier 3. 65% they, they got to have changed that, right? Like, that that's crazy. So, the, it, it claims the trees now. So, that doesn't... What I would have loved to have seen, I mean, it doesn't really matter, but like a, just a, a change in the color of, of the trees that it's claimed when you click the hunting cabin. Just, I don't, I don't even know. Uh, that's, that's, that's kind of wild though, right? Like, so 36 a minute. I, I, I don't know what this translates to, but I'm assuming it's probably like 54 a minute, something around that. Okay. So, um, hunting cabins, we, we've already seen that one. Uh, goal generation is now fixed to 30 second intervals. Instead of reducing the interval with the bounty mechanic, tiers now provide a percentage increase to hunting cabin gold income at each tier. I don't know why they, they like this 30 second interval. I, I always felt like minutes is just so much easier. Like if we're doing, or is it just, it's just generating 18 gold a minute. Is that, or, yeah, yeah or rather, sorry, 36 gold a minute, 18 gold every 30 seconds. I think that's what it's saying. So every 30 seconds, I'm going to be getting 18 gold, which is what it looks like is happening. What's my AI doing? Let's check in on the AI. AI going ham over here. Look at this AI. God damn. So there's the there's the other 18. Yeah. Okay. So that makes sense. So this is it's a 30 second interval. Okay. So gold income is capped. So before I, I never actually understood how it worked before. So I just reduced the interval down. I'm guessing. Uh, so global income is capped at 300 gold a minute cap at tier zero bounty. So that's what I'm at at the moment. With tier three bounty, income caps out at 500 gold a minute for all hunting cabins. So what about hunting? What about tier two, tier three, tier four? Now, what's interesting to note is there's actually a, I didn't I didn't know this, but there's actually a um, an indicator when you reach maximum bounty on the UI. Is that? I should be claiming some of the same trees. 55. That's, that could be much better. That's okay. 44. What's the difference between this? Oh, we're going to have cl same claim trees. Anyway, let's go 44 here. 36. Wow, you can see that. So you really want to try and optimize that shit. Let's, let's just go here. 47. Wonderful. This guy here, 50. Okay, and... So, if if I remember correctly, it's this little thing here changes from gold generation. It, it changes. It's like, now I'm capped out. 
So you can see that it takes a while for it to cap out. Let's go get these ones as well. Shouldn't be too much overlap. 50, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go like 39 on this bad boy here. 46, not bad. Now we don't want to kill any wolves just yet. So it still doesn't tell us that it's capped out. It's 15 a minute. I mean, we probably got to wait. 54, 16 a minute. Okay, so hunting cabins now show a tree counter in the UI when built. Gold kicker text is now visible when cabins generate gold. Adjusted the rate of gold generation using a diminishing returns formula to balance the sieve on maps with densely packed forests. Ah. Ah. Okay. Okay. High trade house does not contribute to the hunting cabin gold generation cap. Also, it doesn't claim trees or require unclaimed trees to generate gold from nearby trees. Ooh. Okay. All right. Um, so let's go for what might be one of the juiciest hunting cabins you can get in the game. Let's do it. Nakaizi Buddha. I don't know what that is. I probably shouldn't. I mean, it's probably just like wood wood chopper, right? Like it's 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 probably not nothing too crazy here. So let's let's go through. I, I'm not gonna go for the craziest one. I'll, I'll just we'll we'll just we'll, we'll, we'll let's just gather the wood out. We'll we'll just throw it down right here. All right, here we go. We, we might even just dig it out in here. This this isn't too crazy. Uh, so let's delete that. And let's go for our hunting... Oh, our hydrate house here. So 167 trees we've claimed with that. And that doesn't affect the hunting cabins nearby. Which is a massive buff, buff to the roost. This is crazy. Um, because now you can put your hunting cabins down. You don't have to delete them. You don't have to think about it. Um, so let's start. So that's that mechanic all worked out. If I go like this, does it, do you reckon that works? I don't actually know if this works. If that actually works, that's legit. You don't have to think about it. I can get these guys up here. Alright, so... Our bounty should be approaching maximum capacity very soon. So we're at 135. Which now takes us up to, um, so we get an extra five villager gather rate and we also generate an extra 10% gold. So before that we had like, which one was it? This one here, which was doing 36, 34 gold. This one here, this was the 36 gold. So that should go up to 38. Uh, but it'll go up even higher, it'll go up to 40. And so now we're generating 25% gold. And then that last bounty. So the last bounty being 65% gold generation, because that affects your high trade house as well, uh, is, is really quite important. So I think that the high trade house really gets a, gains a lot of power uh, in this situation. Um, let's look to kill our boars as well. Look at the boars on this map. I just realized there's three boars that spawn here. One, two, three. And he's already killed his deer. There's a couple more deer back here. Let's go get them. One, two, three. One, two. Help them out. Uh, and so we've got our... So we're almost maxed out. He's, he's on the move. He's making TCs everywhere. I got respect for the guy. He's a bit of a boomer, like myself. Let's take that out first. That'll push us to 450. And both of these push us to, four, to 500, so we probably shouldn't have grab that wolf, but that's okay. We're special. So with an extra 65% on base, that 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 is just, it's, that's a massive amount of gold that's generated through. 
Um, now, it still doesn't tell me that it's capped. It used to tell you that, hey, you've reached gold cap. And I, I feel like I should be more than capped right now um, from my hunting cabins. Um, so, I mean, let, let's just keep adding them in. There's a wolf right there. Let's go get it. Oh, he's pushing out. We gotta, we gotta throw down a quick keep. How to beat the AI in one second. Boom. Spring and placement. Boiling oil. Let's go. I need, I need defense. I need defense in here right now. Alright. So we'll keep these. Actually, that's probably too close to his thing. And I don't want to get that alarm going. Let's just put it like here-ish. So, there, there should be a little icon that says you've reached maximum capacity up here. Oh, you can see how that disappeared? I, th I think maybe that's it. 400 gold a minute on that. But essentially the point that I'm trying to make is that with your high trade house now, obviously it still produces deer. Like, it's imperative to get to that maximum thing in the late game. And the only way you're going to be able to do that is the high trade house. So I wouldn't be surprised if we do see people um, really just like only going for the high trade house now. Like, don't get me wrong, obviously relics are nice, but at the end of the day, that, that's a lot of gold that you're dealing with. And like, R Rus power really comes in from like late game passive gold generation, uh, mass siege. Um, so I, I wouldn't be surprised if we just really do see people moving into this completely. And it doesn't look like that icon does does show up that, that, it's, uh, that it's capped. It looks like it just disappears. All right, so over, overall, very good changes there. Uh, knight sabers reworked into knight poleaxes. Okay, knight weapon swap from a saber to a poleaxe. This is purely a visual change and still adds four down. Okay, okay. Like you didn't have to say reworked then. You just had to say, changed, changed the visuals and renamed it. Uh, horse archers mounted precision reworked into a new tech called mounted training. Unlocks the gallop ability, causing horse archers to move at maximum move speed with plus two range weapon range for eight seconds. Maximum move speed? Oh, see, I just left. I just left my game. And now you're going to make me join it back up. Because now I need to know what maximum movement speed is. Is that like 2.28 movement speed? I'm pretty sure it's something ridiculous. I know that Mongols can reach the movement speed cap um, with their horsemen charging, Khan ability, and the Yam network. It, it gets crazy. So is, it, is that what's happening here? So let's do that. Let's get in a jiffy. I took a screenshot. Cool. Sorry to all of you guys out there. Uh, why did I build a stable? I want archery range. Okay. So our horse archers are out. 1.6 movement speed. Mounted precision. It's a special ability. And we're going to pop the movement. Or pop the ability. And they're at 2 movement speed. Apparently 2 is the cap. I don't, I don't think 2 is the cap. Or at least it didn't used to be the cap. But maybe it's changed. Maybe that's just how it's reflected on the UI there. Uh, let's just quickly check the Mongol. Uh, I need to build a landmark. I can't build a landmark because I don't have Yam, but I can get Yam Network from here. Oh my god, you know, Jiffy. Do I already, do I, don't I just already have Yam? Yeah, I already have Yam. So we're at 2.16 movement speed, and then we pop this. 2.87 movement speed. So thank you very much. I think I know that that is not maximum movement speed. And then on top of that, I can also do a charge, uh, which takes us that even further away. So I'd probably reword that to be maximum movement speed. Um, but okay. Uh, Streltsy, melee damage increased from 50 to 60 because they needed a buff in melee, apparently. Uh, no longer no longer has the double time ability. We wanted to further distinguish the roles of Horse Archer and Streltsy. The Horse Archer is weaker and more mobile. The Streltsy is a slow powerhouse. What did the double time ability do? I didn't actually know what the double time ability did. Okay, I, I, I trust them. Lodge your ships can can longer exceed population cap by converting lower cost ships into higher pops. I think that means that they can no longer do that. And added a new ability to the Kremlin, which when activated calls all available militia. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. Instead of having to click through, you just do that. Wonderful. 
Castle watch tech reduced from 100 stone to 50 stone and research time reduced from 300 to, or 30 seconds to 15. If I remember correctly, I think castle watch tech is just an increase of the line of sight of the wooden fortress. Oh my God, six tiles. That's crazy, gosh. Oh, that's so crazy. Six tiles for 50 stone. Sign me up, man. I'll take two. That is, uh, that is nice. Okay, so overall changes for the Rus as we reach a two hour mark in this video. I like it. I like it. It makes it more streamlined. I like the fact that you have diminishing returns formula on the, um, the densely packed forests. I like that the um, hunting cabins um, now claim trees. They don't adversely affect neighboring hunting cabins um, because that now that means that you can actually just like put hunting cabins around an entire forest. Uh, I like the fact that the high trade house now doesn't get adversely affected by it. Uh, it. It's much easier to understand, but I feel still feel don't. I still feel like you don't know when you're at maximum cap per minute, but it feels like it's a lot, right? Like 500 gold a minute. Like you, you, got, you guys saw how many hunting cabins I had that were good quality hunting cabins and how hard it was for me to reach that 500 gold a minute. I, I had to make like 10 hunting cabins on, on on hideout. So you're going to be making 15 hunting cabins in a real game. It's or, or 20, 20 hunting cabins, maybe. Who knows? But 500 gold a minute is definitely nice. Passive gold. It's free gold. It's free real estate. Um, and then on top of that, I mean, you're getting like, what, 400 gold a minute from the high trade house. I mean, uh, to be fair, that was like a crazy good high trade house. So probably not. It's going to be close to like 250 on a good day. So overall, you're, you're picking up a lot of passive gold here as as the Rus. I think the significance of relics for the Rus is reduced. I wouldn't be surprised to see Rus players completely avoiding... Um, completely avoiding the uh, the other Rus landmark, the Abbey of the Trinity, um, just simply because the hunting cabin or the, the big hunting cabin is just now good. Uh, when I say the big hunting cabin, I'm talking about the uh, the high trade house. The high trade house is just actually so good now. You can you can always get it on a guaranteed like good spot. Share it share it with the hunting cabin. Uh, you don't have to delete it. It's like it's it's really really nice. Other than that, yeah, I mean th these are good changes overall. This patch is it's beautiful, right? Like don't get me wrong, I, I absolutely love it. I still feel like it's missing a few things. Like most notably, we're in season five now been 18 months since age of empires 4 has been out and we still don't have a any real change to the business model of age of empires and that disappoints me because i would have thought that they would have realized by now but i guess not um that's gonna be the end of the video what do you guys think i mean if you made it to the two hour mark uh i, I, I will let you in on some um you know what I maybe i shouldn't maybe i should you know uh i, I know the gender I'll say that much, but uh, we've got another one on the way. Um, le let me just say, it's uh, it's, it's going to be an exciting time ahead. Uh, Drongo's going to become a, a father again soon. And, uh, well, th this, there's going to be another little boy in the family. Let's just put it that way. Uh, there's, we're going to have baby Drongo and we're going to have little baby Drongo. So, all right, there you guys go. A little, little bit of a gender reveal for you at the end of the video. So, hope you guys uh, enjoy that one. And, uh, of course... We'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.